Well, that is the video that I've been wanting to make for quite some time. We've been talking about what is to come for Liverpool. We've been talking about how the team can click, how things can come together. And you don't want to get too far ahead of yourselves. But when the satisfying result happens for a Liverpool fan, especially in the middle of one of these frustrating seasons when everyone's kind of getting a bit ahead of themselves, talking about sackings, talking about all this kind of stuff, it's important not to rub a band and go the other way. 7-0 against Manchester United, the heaviest defeat since 1931, which was against Wolves, where they also lost 7-0, is a, like inherently a great thing for Liverpool, not only as a club in history, but also this season. Loads of people, in fact, Rio Ferdinand himself said, I haven't been this confident in quite some time when watching United versus Liverpool. And I'm starting to feel that, you know, United are going to get a pretty easy result today. It was the opposite for Manchester United today. And, you know, we can talk about United in a minute or like what their motivation was or what exactly they were doing in this game. But let's just extol some of the virtues of what Liverpool were doing for a second. What you can talk about when you talk about Liverpool this season, the lack of intensity or the change in intensity, the change in when the, when the intensity is implied, the change when Liverpool are out of formation or in defensive formations and transitioning. Lots of players didn't look like they knew where they were going. Relationships were still being formed and patience was going to be the key for this fan base this season because it wasn't going to be a it's going to click tomorrow kind of thing. And to some extent, there was frustration with that because it felt like Liverpool were keeping something in the tank. They thought they were sort of going, well, maybe we can rely on us clicking later in the season. And that annoyed fans a little bit. It was like, well, put some effort in. Get ahead of where you're meant to be right now. Pre-season, Klopp was saying things like, this is one of the best bonded teams I've ever seen. This is the best version of Liverpool that we've got, the happiest version of Liverpool that we've got. Mane had left and there was clearly a structural change. Now, I'm not saying that all of that has been fixed over the last, what, four games where Liverpool have kept clean sheets in all their games, but the one versus Real Madrid where they scored as many goals and there was a humiliation. The things balance out. But the point being, there is something that Liverpool have sort of struck on within the league and it doesn't feel like chance because people who've been watching Liverpool for a while know that this is a mixture of obviously the new pieces that Klopp has got in Cody Hakpo and obviously in Darwin Nunez, but then also someone like Harvey Elliott starting in midfield. And then a, maybe a slight reversal back to some of the things that were happening last season under, Liverpool, under Klopp at Liverpool. Some changes are starting to come in and you can see that the training is definitely beginning to kick in for this Liverpool team but then on top of that they hadn't really had a result like this that have felt validating that have felt like hey we can still be a dominant side against other people step on that guy's neck is what fans wanted today when United were what 3-0 down I didn't think Liverpool get much further than that in fact I thought hey as a Liverpool fan this season even doubters to believer style kind of belief you're sort of going why don't we just sit back a little bit let's just just give them, give them a minute because they might come and do something. But broadly, and that's where I'll start with this, because I want to get to the attack later, Liverpool managed to blunt a lot of what it is that United wanted to do. And United, I guarantee you, played a lot into Liverpool's hands. There was an element of arrogance that United turned up with. It looked as if they just thought, hey, we're going to win this game today no matter what, so let's just turn up and do it. There has kind of been a bit of that creeping in at United, a little bit of, yeah, we've sort of done this now. We, you know... I know pundits were saying things about them, but this team is still slightly too public facing where it's slightly too care. It slightly cares a little bit too much about the way that they're perceived. And that, that happens in transitional times, right? But the same with Liverpool. Now, more recently, the club have actually had something to go out there and shout about, go out there and actually sort of go, you know what? Yeah, we're still Liverpool. We still have a Klopp identity. We still have all these core elements that make Liverpool Liverpool. And that was what happened in the back line today. Virgil van Dijk, Canate, obviously Liverpool's A side of a starting line, a starting back line. R Robertson on the opposite side loves these kind of United games. You can see him bombing forward. You see him loving playing Anthony at the back. And on top of that, you've got Trent Alexander-Arnold, who probably had one of his better defensive displays today. I know there are going to be people who managed to clip him up and say, oh, Trent was poor actually in today's game. And actually, statistically, uh, we can give you this one because he had a poor game in... A there were plenty of good things that he did. And I think broadly, we should lean into those things rather than trying to go, you know what? Yeah, you got gone. this guy went past you here, this guy went past you there, or you're out of position here, out of position there. I don't know if that's mentally how Trent Alexander-Arnold operates. I feel like he's more of a macro player than a micro player, and he's had to develop into being that kind of guy. Ahead of that, Liverpool started Fabinho and Henderson, two of the most maligned players in the squad this season. How do I know? I made a documentary on the captain of Liverpool last season. I've not got anything but negative DMs from all these annoyed fans since who are like, oh, she maybe is done. 
And then Fabinho, who has been quite changeable this season. I've seen him live a couple of times and thought, you know what? You can see what it is that Liverpool are trying to do with him. You can see what they want their six or kind of transitional player to be. And you can see where his pass is trying to go, who he's trying to hook up with. When Fabinho is at his best, when he's closing down, when he's doing all the right things that Liverpool fans have come to know him to be, he's great. And sometimes I think you throw the baby out with the bathwater when there's just no need. I said it at Brighton. I think I said it in the game after that. I said it multiple times this season. It's clear that the players were not happy about things happening in terms of, A, I think there were the training, the new training that Liverpool have been doing. Some people have been a little bit irked by that. And then the new formation and the new changes that Liverpool were trying to implement. You could see there was doubt. There was a lack of trust within the team. But there were also just issues around... Where's that player going to be when I make this pass? Because before you knew Mane would be X when you made this pass. Salah would be X, you know, through the middle you had this. And we'll get there in a second. But then you had Harvey Elliott. Now, Harvey in the first half, there was a little bit of frustration around him. A couple of misplaced passes. A couple of times he thought, maybe you could have threaded that through. Or maybe if you weren't a kid who's not quite beefed up yet, we could have done with, you know, someone with a bit of body in midfield. Maybe he would have played a Thiago. Let's stop overanalyzing Harvey Elliott and let's stop trying to get into the minute details of those kind of things. He had a good game today. He had a game where you, you literally go, you know what? Yeah, I, I actually really appreciate where, where you fit into this midfield, how you fit into this midfield. And I can kind of see where Jurgen Klopp's looking to put you or Pep Lingers, depending on which coach you like, has more influence. And then let's talk about this front line. There have been a few subjects I've held off mentioning. Darwin Nunez is becoming that chaos that everyone loves in a cliche way talking about alongside the control and pacing of someone like Cody Hakpo. Someone who, too often you go, on too many touches there, Cody, and things get a little bit, you know, is this going to be our game? A couple of times where maybe one or two of the players look a bit leggy because they're stepping over the ball. They don't necessarily feel like they have the best close control, but suddenly Cody Hakpo clicks. There's great passes through to Salah. There's great passes through to Nunez. There's good layoffs to either one of the fullbacks. And you're seeing that Liverpool, Liverpool know exactly where their teammates are meant to be. And that wasn't happening earlier on in the season. Now, maybe you could make the argument that sometimes it doesn't click for Liverpool or sometimes it clicks for the opposition. Liverpool's heads go down. But the opposite happened in this game. So I'll wait for that. It hasn't happened in the last few games. You can see that sheer force of will that Liverpool have had. Combine that with now the... Patterns that Liverpool are trying to make out in the field. And you can see when they're zipping the ball around, it is spinning the opposition. United started with Varane, Martinez, Casemiro, all the guys that this season they have said are the stalwarts of that team. Bruno Fernandes lost his head out there. If I was a United fan, I would be upset about the disgrace of a display that he put on later on there. I'm sure there have been plenty of other good things he's done this season, but let's not act like that wasn't a poor result on his part and plenty of other players today. Luke Shaw lost his head. Plenty of other players also were just completely off it, kicking, trying to get Liverpool players instead of getting tactically into the game. And it played straight into Liverpool's hands because Liverpool were putting them all over the place. Salah knew exactly where to put the ball so that Hakpo would be able to get it over to Nunez. Nunez sometimes drifting inside, Hakpo drifting out wide. Those combinations, that shifting, made for a nightmare for that central defence of Manchester United. The two headers that Nunez had, really, it was quite simple movement that he needed to put in there. Very simple, quite telegraph crosses, actually, both times. And I get it, like the, the Elliott one was very close, so he sort of reacted quite instinctively. But Henderson one floated in, and really it was a tribute to Bobby Firmino before Firmino even came on. It was a beautiful little dink of a header into the far netting, and away he's running, and Liverpool, what, 5 0 up at that point? On top of that, you've then got Hakpo. Great finish for the first goal, separates Liverpool massively. One great moment of actual real skill that if someone like, say, Rashford did, we'd be fawning over that right now. So let's give him the love that he deserves. Second goal, equally brilliant. Then you've got Salah. Salah has become a bit more, he's had to pick off maybe more scraps this season. And some of that seems to have sharpened him later on. I feel like there's enough distance now between Liverpool and the World Cup that Liverpool are basically beginning to get into that, oh, okay, what, what is it that we're actually formulating here? And you could kind of, weirdly, you could even kind of see that against Real Madrid, right? You could even kind of see that against some of the better sides. And you saw it today come to fruition against Manchester United. Then on comes Bobby Firmino. Now, this week, there were some emotional moments around the training ground. Apparently, he took some time to tell Jurgen Klopp that he no longer wants to remain at the club. And weirdly, like, no one's gone, oh, we hate you because of this. They've said, great timing, done in such a respectful way, and emotionally, you can tell the player cares about how he moves on from Liverpool. 
he said, and his, or at least his agent said, that we're gonna, he's going to give his best right up until the end. He wants to give Liverpool his best version as a send-off. Cool. As a Liverpool fan, I love it. There should be a whole video, and there will be a whole video later on in the season about Bobby Firmino. Like it or not, Bobby Firmino is a bigger club legend than Michael Owen and Fernando Torres. I'm just saying. So on top of that, he then comes on and scores a great kind of bizarre Bobby Firmino goal that shows that A, the level of investment from a lot of the players that came on. So you buy Stitches, your Milners, your Curtis Joneses, and your Bobby Firminos, which ever, and Jota as well. They're very happy that they are back in the side. They're very happy there is this level of rotation. And the players are all clearly understanding where they need to be. You could see the moves were even coming off even when Liverpool didn't have their starters on the field. So having some of these players back and saying that injuries weren't maybe impacting some of this, squad depth, and also the fact that Liverpool were trying to bed in so many youngsters whilst also having so many aging players on the field, these were all contributing factors that were tiny parts of a bigger issue for Liverpool. Now, this doesn't mean that Liverpool are going to go on and win the league or go for a, a title push this season. But if you're pushing for the top four, this is probably one of the best results that you could have, if not the best result that you could have. I can also give you the flip side of that coin and say, hey, you know, in a big thrashing like that, United probably gave up about halfway through, so it's a bit of a misnomer, but great way to pad your goals for. Liverpool kept another clean sheet. What's that? Four in four in the league now. And on top of that, you've got the fact that Liverpool are now in a push for the top four. And if they win in their next game, by the way, Burden the hands worth two in the bush, so always go for the game, the points you've got rather than the points you can get. Don't get ahead of yourselves. But Liverpool are putting themselves in a position to be in the top four. Level on games with Spurs after Liverpool play their next game. And then, weirdly, they're only one of United's best seasons in recent years. And United are only seven points ahead of Liverpool. Just think about that for a minute. The perspective and the narrative that's been going with Liverpool is not one that's been painted by that points total so far. By the way, also passing a points total that means that Liverpool now above the relegation point of points. So, great. Let's avoid that relegation this season. So many people acting as if Liverpool were in a relegation battle. So I've said my piece about Bobby Firmino. I will do a whole video about him. The guy's an absolute, like, I mean, he is a legend at Liverpool and will ever forever be a legend, but for many different reasons, which were his own individual personality traits, which people should be, like, we should forever remember Bobby Firmino is one of the best. Then on top of that, Mo Salah passed Robbie Fowler today for all time Liverpool goal scorer in the Premier League era. And he's a striker like that. Not even a striker in that way. So let's just put into perspective how good Mo Salah is. You know, we had that 20 goal a season thing. We had the assist that he's also had. There have been so many other chats about whether he's been poor or not. I don't think he was involved in a lot of games. I think there was a lot of disappointment around his level of performance. He signed this new contract. Maybe he's not as motivated. Do you know what I mean, Robbie? Like all these kind of things where people are basically just theorizing and free associating on camera because they can't be bothered to look deeper into it. Now, would I have sold Salah in the offseason for a big price if it meant that Liverpool get someone else good? Possibly. But now seeing the turnover of this squad and seeing this summer is going to be a critical one where we can actually judge FSG for what they will be and what they are, Mo Salah this season has had another historic season. And in that historic season, we're still saying it's a bad season. What I'm saying is this game gives Liverpool fans the chance just to take a moment of perspective, take a breath and go, the satisfying results means that we should be saying to ourselves, what have we got to be grateful for at Liverpool right now? Not everything has to be terrible. Not everything has to be, oh, you know, let's get analytical and say the side of, you know, oh, they didn't actually perform that well against United because United didn't really try and they gave up halfway through and these analytics actually show X, Y, Z. Just take it as a result, which is what Liverpool need right now. And when Liverpool were on that tail end of that terrible season they had before, what was it about? It was about the results. Alisson came down the field and got a header. We still talk about that now. In these kind of seasons, and when we're talking about getting transfers, when we're talking about attracting big players to the club, think just for a second about a big player watching this kind of performance, that kind of atmosphere, these kind of moments, and what they must be thinking when they're watching. I'll leave you guys with that. Thanks a lot for watching. If you haven't already hit subscribe, I'm going to encourage you to do so now. And I will chat to you in the future because, hey, this channel is going to keep going. Enjoy the 7-0. Enjoy your evening. There will be a video about Manchester United, which probably is going to be quite positive because I can afford to be very charitable, but also I quite like what Eric Ten Hag is doing. But that will come tomorrow. Have a good day. Much love. Oh! Hit the f subscribe button. <laughs> what is wrong with you?